Hey guys, Daniel here, 395 Junkie, and we are off on another adventure. It is Friday morning, the day after Thanksgiving, and I hope everybody had an amazing Thanksgiving with family, friends, and uh, whoever else that you guys hung out with. Hopefully you guys filled your bellies and enjoyed the day. We are headed up to do the Mojave Trail. It's not really uh, super hardcore off-roading, so we felt comfortable having Brianna bring her Jeep along with us. She's behind me, and so we're a couple hours out, but we're gonna enter the trail from the eastern side over there off the uh, Highway 95. I'm excited to bring you guys along with us, and I can't wait to show you guys the Mojave Trail. Alright guys, so we made it to our first spot. We're just going to stop here and have some lunch. Um, we're at a little uh, area called Fort Paiute. And uh, when we pulled up here, I thought it was a through and through that we'd be able to keep going up this trail, but apparently it's not. There's a gate up here that's closed. I think we're going to have to backtrack a little bit here after we're done eating lunch. And uh, we passed, uh, I think it was called a pole line road or something. So we're going to go down that road. All right, guys, so we made it to Penny Can Tree. So this is a good little spot to stop because uh, Sierra, she's being a trooper. It's not an easy ride on the dog, I'll tell you. I mean, it should be if she was just chill and relax, but she's kind of spazzy right now. Kind of like Isabella. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Mama Goose is over there. She keeps riding Brianna's butt because she wants to go faster and faster. But Bree's handling it pretty good too, going up that little mountain there. I know. Were you scared? So, are you supposed to put pennies in here? Sure, dear. Oh, can I put a penny in there? Can I put a penny in there? Yeah. Can we make a wish? Sure. I <laughs> wish. I become a million. I wish. <laughs> you want to put a penny in here? Sure, dear. <laughs> that was funny. I wish. And I'm going to keep it to myself. <laughs> it's the only way they come true. So we're making decent time now on this road. It's get smoother and then it gets a little rocky at times so you have to slow down. But I mean, we're going 20, 30 miles an hour in some areas. So uh, we're making up for lost time. All right guys, so we're back on the trail and it's about 3.30 and that sun is setting quick. We are probably going to find camp here in about 30 to 45 minutes and we'll show you guys where we end up. So catch in a little bit.
man this is amazing we uh we just pulled in a few minutes ago brie i blew her christmas present i told her last night we got her a deep sleep so she got an early christmas present because she was coming on this trip i figured it'd be a great time for her to use it so she'll be sleeping with isabella in her jl with the deep sleep mama goose and i will be in the eye camper and sierra will be uh down low in her pen and uh, it's going to be a cold night tonight so i brought my uh, little garage thermometer temperature gauge that has uh, outdoor in indoor so i'm going to put the outdoor one actually in sierra's crate area to make sure it doesn't get too cold and if all that doesn't work if she's if it's just too darn cold in there i'll bring her in the tent with us in the middle of the night uh we, we don't want her to freeze or you know be miserable sierra, but we think fun. she'll be okay so the moon's out there are some amazing colors out here right now the sun just went down but we are going to get a fire going asap so that we can uh stay warm and go, go collect wood we're going to need as much as we can because we can only go through like one and a half of these because you're going to want wood in the morning All right, Bree, do it to it. Early Christmas present. Oh. She got a deep sleep for her Jeep. So we got it all set up. Plugging it in. All right, so it is five o'clock and I'm getting a very late start, but luckily we had a very late lunch and it's time to do some dinner. And tonight is something totally extravagant. It is not practical to do camping. So I'm not showing you guys as a practical camp meal because this there's nothing about this meal that's practical. What it is, is it's an opportunity for me to use my Dutch oven, which I don't get to do too often. But what we're doing tonight is we're going to be cooking the prime rib in the Dutch oven. What you'll see here is there's five boxes of uh, rock salt, four pounds each. So 20 pounds of rock salt. Where that's going to go is an inch of it is going to line the bottom of the, the Dutch oven. I'm going to add my rub onto the prime rib. And then I'm going to fill the sides and the top of it with some more rock salt. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this giant Dutch oven out of the way. I'm going to fill the, the chimney here for the charcoal. I'm going to fill it all the way up and I'm going to set it on the fire so the coals get nice and red. All right, so let's get the uh, rock salt lined on the bottom here. All right, we're just going to line it about an inch off the bottom. Oh, damn. All right, guys, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to prepare the wet rub. And I got my ingredients kind of scribbled down here. None of this is by memory. This is just stuff I'm finding off the Internet and doing a little prep work before the trip. And when I say a little prep work, uh, it, it's a lot of prep work. I don't just come out here and try to remember everything. It takes, you know, a uh, couple hours of uh, prepping and uh, it's worth every minute of it. So let's get going here. We got a half cup of herbs de Provence that we're going to put in here and that we're just going to eyeball. Three tablespoons fresh rosemary, which we got some right here. I'm going to chop that up real quick. We'll add it in there. Where's the sensor? Dang, that's a sharp knife. Put it around your All right, that looks to be about three tablespoons of rosemary. Yes. Now it wants cloves. 12 cloves of garlic Five minced, minutes. so I'm gonna get busy on this. Ooh, that garlic smells good. We're safe from the vampires. <laughs> well, at least we are in this tent. Hey, we're 
Tent, the cu- the kukui is gonna come after you guys. The kukui likes deep sleep. No, the kukui likes to climb. Cool. So he Careful wants this. to climb the ladder. Yeah, burn it. Oh my god. Yeah, we'll watch all. All right, so garlic's about all I, chopped I, I, up. I <laughs> We're gonna throw it in the mix here. Alright, we're going to do some salt and pepper. Can I get a sous chef over here? Sous chef? <laughs> sous chef, anyone? I need someone to crunch the salt and pepper in here. I don't want to put my garlicky hands on there. Salt and pepper is my middle name. <laughs> no, your middle name's Michelle. Salt and pepper's here. So crunch it up in there. Salt, 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 salt. <laughs> Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Come on now. More? Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. All right, now the pepper. We get this beauty here ready to go. Here is out. All right, dear, can I get you to open this up and? Uh, drizzle it in here. Sous chef. Sous chef. Whose middle name's olive oil? <laughs> That's your life. I'll be olive oil, Popeye. Hey. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in here. In the bowl? Yep. Tell me when. That's good for now. All right. So we got a nice little textured mixture here that we got going on here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use it as a rub and just kind of pat it all over this bad boy. Oh, you get like frozen when you walk away from a fire. And it ain't going to be pretty, but just got to kind of move it all over the place for now. And then just keep kind of working it in there. The sun isn't working here. All right, so this hunk of meat is about as good as it's going to get. That looks like it hurt. And now we're going <laughs> to get the Dutch oven, and it is showtime. Hiya, <laughs> Susha. Is your middle name Dutch oven by chance? I said her. <laughs> she looks very cozy here. Wow. So I, I need you to bring the Dutch oven and set it right here. It's heavy. You're going to have to use all your muscles. <laughs> <laughs> set it there. Take the lid off. <laughs> it's a trick. Lid. And then I can't, I don't know if the camera can see, but you got the salt here. We're going to set this right in the middle. And now we're going to surround it with the salt. And we're going to use this to keep the temperature of this big old piece of meat. And put that right in the center. And it is... 34 degrees, 32 degrees and going down. All right, and now we're gonna finish burying this piece of meat. All right. Sous chef. Sous chef. Is it a good seal? Watch out, banana. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, dear. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I get extra warm. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's all right, dude. It's not a real flame. I don't think it is. <laughs> no charge for the extra heat. Oh.
All right. Now we're going to put some of these bad boys right on top. <laughs> Let's spread those out just a little bit, give it a nice even cook. Like we'll see. We may not be eating tonight. We might go hungry. <laughs> it's been probably about 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and the temperature hadn't moved she in is. the whole time that we've had all these coals on here. And I've been adding more coals. But I think it was because the middle part of the prime rib was still frozen. But you can start to smell it. And our temperature uh, is at 30.6. And that doesn't sound great at all. But we were hovering at 29.3, 29.1 for the last 30 minutes. Maybe 45. So we're starting to see an upwards trend here. You can start seeing the smoke coming out of it here, and you can start smelling it, which is great. Put it like right there. The girls the are preparing. Oh, hold on. You got to poke the potatoes with a fork. We're not putting it on the fire. We're just setting it to the side. Don't on you want to poke it before you put, wrap it in foil? I think you poke it at the same time as the foil and the potato. Poking the... Right. Well, why would you poke a potato and then cover it with Poking foil? the potato hey. is supposed to release hey. notes. Potatoes, your department. Prime ribs, my yeah, department. Yeah, it doesn't stay in your department. Well, We've never done the potatoes in the fire pit, which my understanding is you just wrap them up in foil after you hit them with a fork. But the girls want to do it a little different. They want to hit the fork while it's wrapped in the foil so pieces of the foil oh get my. lodged inside the potato. And then we'll have like superhuman powers. <laughs> no? Tough crowd. All right, guys, so the uh, prime rib is at just near uh, the century mark. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to get the beans ready. The girls got the baked potatoes in the fire already. And I'm going to struggle with this can opener. Dear, we need a new can opener. Never mind, it's working just fine. Is muscle. it cutting? Yeah. Put some muscle into it. <laughs> they got jokes. All right, so we're getting close. It's at 127 right now, and we're going to pull it off at about 135. So probably another 10 minutes or so, and we're going to pull this beef off the fire and let it rest. And until then, hit it, Mama. Oh, my God, no. Okay. All right, guys, so it's uh, 137, which is about 7 degrees, 8 degrees further than I want it to be. But this way my gals won't complain about it being too rare. So I'm going to knock all the coals off the top here. Oh, Is apple pie the only dessert we have? Alright, you can see some of the... Uh, Sierra. Some of the juices kind of started going through it. So I'm going to get a spoon. And I'm going to start knocking that all off of there onto the ground. And I'll clean it up in the morning, I promise. All right, so we got all the salt off the prime rib. We're going to just kind of stab it and set it here in the middle. We're going to wrap it up and let it sit for about 15 minutes or so. We're going to cut it right down the middle. And then we're going to cut it again. Oh, look at that. That is perfectly cooked. We're going to do some beans for everybody. All right, all we need now is the potatoes. <laughs> you have ash all over you, man. All right, so dinner is served. We got some prime rib, baked potatoes, and some beans. Now I just need to serve these gals up so everybody can... Fill their bellies and time to go to bed. <laughs> Except for Mama Goose and I. We're going to party.
<laughs> All right, guys, so uh, dinner served. I'm going to try to eat my dinner with two knives because I don't have a spoon or a fork or anything. <laughs> we will, uh, we're going to finish eating dinner and enjoy the rest of this fire. Probably go to bed shortly after we're done eating and we will see you guys in the morning. So, so we got Mr. Buddy Heater going on inside the tent here and it is... 62 indoors which is where we're at right now and sierra is in a nice warm 73 degrees downstairs mm. yeah. warm it up good morning it was an absolutely wonderful night um Heard the coyotes howling and barking and making all kinds of noise, which was really, really cool. Um, Sierra slept right through the night. Uh, I got up a couple times to go down into the Jeep and start it for her because it was getting down to about 43, 44 degrees in the Jeep. And uh, I just wasn't comfortable with her laying in there. I mean, she wasn't complaining. She wasn't moving around, but... I figured I'll take a few minutes, went down there, started it up about three times during the night, and uh, kept her warm. Um, the girls, Brie, was it cold? It was freezing. <laughs> they did not fare too, uh, too well in the Jeep. I heard them start it, would you say, I think you started it once or twice. Yeah, just once. Um, overall, great morning. Uh, just kind of picked up camp a little bit. I'm going to get coffee on here in a sec. Mama Goose is going to be coming down and uh, then I'll get some drone footage of the spot. It's just uh, fantastic. So Tembo Tusk recently uh, released this new product that is a little uh, side table for their Scottle, and I love it. I'm already putting it to good use. I mean, it stands, you know, it, it, it stays up by a little rubber grommet underneath there, and then the pressure of it wanting to go down keeps it from sliding. And got spot for a little bit of gear that you need while cooking. Got some holes here that I use for putting some of my uh, cooking devices in there, and I love it. You guys so we're doing sausage breakfast burritos for breakfast. And just going to start with the hash browns. Here, we start chopping up this. It's my job. I'm just helping. <laughs> he likes to micromanage. Stop all right, it! Alright, wipe it off. 
and I'll walk away. All right, so whoever's using the uh, X Peds as their air mattress, uh, we learned a very valuable lesson last night. Um, <laughs> We usually blow both air mattresses up and then set Mr. Heater on top of a plastic tray. And that keeps it, you know, away from the uh, mattresses, specifically the seams where the sides meet the top. I put Mr. Buddy Heater still on that plastic tray. And what that caused was the heater to shoot heat directly at the side of the X-Ped where it, that seam where it meets the top and this morning when I was getting out of bed I put a little pressure on that area and I guess it just caused a little bit too much air pressure in that uh, by the seam and my only thought is the heat from Mr. Heater uh, maybe they use like some sort of a glue adhesive to you know uh, seal it I, I'm not sure what exactly happened but uh when i bought it it came with a little patch kit i'm gonna try to patch it up and hope that works but uh what about for tonight yeah for tonight <laughs> we well, well we still have the single so i'll be comfortable where is it it's up there still so you just won't have a ma an air mattress oh is that right actually you could have the single i'll take the double and kind of Fold it over on each other so it'll be at least kind of cushioned. All right, dear. That's a bad idea. If she takes off running, she's going to take the table and oh, her yeah. breakfast no. and everything else. No, 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 no. Dear. That's a bad idea. If she takes off running, she's going to take the table and oh, her yeah. breakfast no. and everything else. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, get the tortillas out. Let me have it. You can have that too. It was all done too, and I spilled a little bit of egg. Sierra went for it, which I said okay because it's a little bit of egg. And then her jacket got caught up on one of the Tembo Tusk legs. So Sierra took off running. Breakfast is all over the ground, and uh, looks like the Tembo Tusk held up. And I'm a dumbass. I burned my hand pretty bad because I was grabbing the tempo the I was grabbing the scottle to <laughs> try to save breakfast so uh, I guess uh, we'll just end up having some uh, oatmeal and uh, pastries hey gotta take the good with the bad what's your breakfast dear sponsored <laughs> because sponsored by Sierra because because that is, is our ground. breakfast <laughs> and what are you what are you and I gonna eat dear coffee and apple pie <laughs> yeah we got some leftover apple pie and poor sierra she's freaked out she got a little bit of trouble because she wouldn't stop running so now she's on now she's in a timeout and there goes breakfast <laughs> well you know at least we all got a good sense of humor about it uh the old daniel i'd be kicking scottles and throwing the <laughs> kick of the food but with age comes wisdom all right we'll catch up with you guys a little bit all right we are back on the trail and it is just barely 11 o'clock so I figure today we'll put in 30 miles or so um, probably knock that out in three or four hours depending on how many stops we take um, see if little miss is a uh, Sierra in the back 
behaves herself. But uh, couldn't be more pleased with that campsite. I mean, man, that was just, it was flat. There was just enough room for all three Jeeps. Um, and uh, I'm hoping we get a, another good spot like that tonight. So I uh, had a couple misfortunes at that campsite, though. I got to be honest, we, uh, uh, the X-Ped, uh, looks like it might be fatally wounded. Uh, we'll see when we get home to see if we can patch it up. It's kind of a weird spot, so I'm not banking on it. Um, and then, obviously, breakfast. Uh, I'm not ready to talk about that just yet. Hey guys, so we stopped at the uh, Mojave mailbox here for uh, for a quick little bite to eat. All right, so we're gonna just finish wrapping up lunch here and this was a cool little spot, the Mojave Road. They got a little mailbox here where you can open it up and put a uh, uh, sign your name on a little ledger, tell everybody you're here. I think Mama Goose did it, so. I did. Yep. And Sierra is happy to be out yeah, of the Jeep sit. for a little bit. It's sit. a slow go today. Sit. Good girl. And the girls have wandered off and found what appears to be a memorial of some type. Memorial. It looks like it's a memorial. Oh, it's a oh. memorial. Oh. Kermit. <laughs> Kermit finally kicked the bucket, and this is a memorial for Kermit the Frog. <laughs> This is weird, but okay. 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 Should have brought our frogs. Cool beans. Oh, cute. He's so little. All right. You guys ready to hit the trail? Yeah. Hopefully, there's no more whoops. What do you think of all them whips? It's nice. It's like a roller coaster. Oh, it is too slow. Not fun, huh, Sierra? All right. Let's go make our way back. Got a long hike back to the Jeeps. All right, guys, so we are uh, making our way out of all this uh, lava tube area. It's just been uh, lava rocks, driving on lava rocks for like the last, I don't know, 45 minutes. But we're just about out of it and about to hit the desert floor. And then we're going to find camp. So see you in a little bit. 